Hello, I'm David D. Hilster. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science, something university professors won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. Today, I am going to do what I had promised, and that is to talk about the variable number system. You can see I've got my little notes here. I've been reading through it. I skim through. I go far and back. and forth. I Get this book. There's a link to it in this video below. Get it, get it, get it. You must understand about where the real number system goes wrong. Yes, our sacred real number system that we use for our mathematics and physics and cosmology and everything else in science and engineering is flawed. Why? Well, look at the square root of negative one. And of course, we have to understand these are just symbols, and that's where I'm going to start in this book. So I'm going to go to the, the first uh, content chapter. The first chapter talks about what the book's about. The second chapter talks about negative numbers. Where did they come from? Obviously, we have this thing called the plus, and we have this thing called the minus. Where did they come from? We are told that the symbols plus and minus were introduced in the 15th century by Germans to denote the excess and, defect, and defective weights of chess. That is, positive and negative signs in the real number system carry this meaning. That is, excess and deficit. So it's not a positive on one side of a number line and the other. It has roots in the real world. We don't come up with systems unless we need them. And the number system that we had, they said, oh, here's a chest. I guess that's what it was, it was saying, introduced by defective weights of chests. So you make a chest, it's supposed to be 20 pounds. This one's plus one pound. This one's minus one pound. And that's what it meant. A, a deficit and a excess. Surplus and deficit, what, what we'll hear later on in the veritable system. Well, let's keep moving forward. The uh, first use of actual negative numbers was way back in 7, 1628. Uh, and that was uh, uh, in India, I believe. That's what it says here. The Greeks implore, blah, 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 blah. But the earliest system, the earliest system negative numbers were the Indian mathematicians. Yes, I was right. Their, their geometry was borrowed from the Greeks, etc., etc. But the Hindus were skeptical. Um, and the Arabs also rejected negative numbers, although they learned the rules for handling them from the Hindus. So they started, they started in India actually using negative numbers. So it's very interesting. This book tells you not only about it. I'm going through this fast. You really got to read this book from end to end. I'm just trying to show you a little bit. But let's jump right to the variable system. We're going to go past a lot of stuff here. I'm just going to hit on some major points, and here it is. Now, it looks like totally uh, nothing interesting. In fact, when I first saw it, I go, uh, so what? But it is super interesting, and that is you've got the real number system line, which is a number line, and the one below is identical, except for the fact there is a hash mark attached, a little, little uh, crosshatch on zero. Very important. Why? because in the veritable number system, you've got to live on one side or the other. You can't live on the positive side and say, I am going to now add uh, a surplus from a neg with a negative number. No, it's sort of directional that if you're on the negative side, you must stay on the negative side. If you're on the positive side, you must stay on the positive side. We have rules in our system. If you take a positive number and multiply a negative number in the real number system, we call that a negative number. If you take two negative numbers and multiply them, we call that a positive. These are rules. Who told you that? Well, you're taught to use it. That's the rule of the real number system, and it gets you into trouble. Why? Well... It gets you into trouble with the square root of negative 1. Negative powers, and you see that here in this chapter, negative powers and roots. And we have the thing that blew my mind when Peter Erickson wrote on the board in 2017 in Vancouver, Canada, at the University of British Columbia. Beautiful place. He wrote on the board, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 equals negative 1. Blew my mind. I knew what he was talking about. Why? Well, let's look at what a square root means. A square root means if you take a square root of any number, you, there's gotta, that is equal to a number which when you multiply it a, to, with itself will equal that number under the square root. It's a symbol. That's what that symbol means. That's what the people who develop the mathematical systems mean when they do that. Well, if you take a square root of 1, what number times what number 
that's identical equals one. One times one equals one. So that's easy. The answer to the square root of, of, of one is one. Well, remember what the rules are in the real number system. If you take any two negative numbers, you will in fact get a positive number. Remember, the square root has to be the same. You can't have the square root equal to minus one times plus one. Can't do it. That doesn't work. It's gotta be the same number. That's what the square root means. So what number times what number in the real number system equals a negative number? None of them. So what does that mean? Well, that means in the veritable system, you can't do that. You can't go to the other side. So it's real simple. What is in the variable number system, what is minus one times minus one? Time's up. What do you think it is? If you gave the answer of negative one, you are correct in the variable number system. Minus one times minus one equals minus one. So if that's the case, what number is, what's the answer to the square root of minus one? What two numbers which are identical in the variable number system multiplied together give you no minus one? Minus one times minus one. Cha-ching! We have just solved that bad boy problem. Then of course you have to think, does that screw everything else up? Do now we have to change all the rules? Not by much. In fact, he goes and he talks about all these equations and all those things. And that of course is something that we want to read in the book and I'm not going to tell you everything because I want you to buy the book. Now I have another page here. Oh, there they're coming. I'm just going to go and uh, we're going to look at some more of the variable. We're going to go in order of the book because you can just, I, you know me, I bounce all, all around way too much. Anyways, going to right here now, which is the variable deficits and surpluses. And basically what he is saying is that what we have to look in the world is not subtraction or negative signs and positive signs, meaning negative. That is, of course, just de designates where you are in a, in a direction on a number line. But he's saying that we want to look at, he says, the use of subtractions is to be called a variable deficit. And the use of a positive is going to be a variable surplus. Hmm. He's paying homage to the history of the plus and minus sign, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So that's just another thing he's talking about. Let's take a look at fractions. Now we know that minus, okay, another quiz. Minus one times minus two equals? Minus two in the variable number system, yes sir. Okay, but here we go with the fractions. And here we have variable fractions. You got to keep in the minus signs. You got to keep them all in the minus signs. You can't have minus one divided by one in the variable number system. Can't do it. Okay, you have to keep them all negative or all positive. All righty. So you have minus two divided by minus two is equal to what in the variable number system? It's easy. You always have to keep with the same sign. If minus two divided by minus two is equal to minus one. What? And you can see that is different from the real number system. Fractions. Uh-oh, what happens with coordinate systems? Boom, boom, boom. You got a real problem because now you got things that are like, you know, half breeds. You got something like a, the plus and then you get a minus and you, oh, you can't live in those. Oh, that means you only can live in this, these two coordinates here, this one and uh, uh, this one here. No, it turns out the answer is quite easy. And that is, it's a number line. A point is two, is a coordinate made of two numbers, the X and the Y. The X is in isolation and the Y is in isolation. They work perfectly well in the variable number system. So, you know, you don't have like coordinate systems, a variable number system that don't work. They all work. In fact, if you really go into the logical part of what Mr. Peter Erickson is, is proposing the variable number system, you in fact will see the logical conclusion that he comes in the books and that's why you have to read it and that's why I'm not going to tell you everything. Well, in the conclusion is, and he talks about the nature of negative numbers, and it's quite amazing because right here he talks about it. The answer is radically insufficient to what is, what is mathematics and what is the concepts of quantity, counting, number, and implicit in many geometric statement, statements, etc. What is all this for? I mean, when we have mathematics for something, it says negative numbers are not found by counting or measuring things of this world. They are found on a number line. 
separated from a po their positive counterparts uh, by a single point so small as to be invisible even to the most powerful microscope. He's talking about zero. So what he's saying is we have a number line and that's why we have all the numbers like minus one and minus two and minus three. But in the real world, one of the things they talked about in the real world, we need a number system to describe physicality. Guess what physics is like that? I'll go back to my what my dad found out is when he's doing calculations for our particle model, which is everything is mass in movement. Everything. Light is. Gravity is. Magnetic fields are. We can explain all kinds of stuff. Man, our model's doing pretty well. But in it, he was doing an equation that has a sine curve in it, and it made no sense. You couldn't have negative particles in count. It's like, okay, right here we have 100 particles. Down here we have minus. You can't have minus particles. What do you do? He shifted everything up by to get to zero. Well, the sine curve is very useful, but it doesn't make sense in the physical world to be in the negative realm. This is the problem. So what the veritable number system is saying, okay, when we're doing calculations in mathematics, if you pick a point uh, somewhere and you're doing some calculations, if you're staying on the one side, all those calculations make sense. And you can even do the square root of negative one because you're on the negative side. You can't mix the two because you're in a different universe. It's almost like parallel. And they're equal. You know, the positive and negative sides, one of the things Peter says in the book is that they treat them sort of like the positive is the big guy and the negative is sort of the nether world in the variable number system. They are truly equal. So I hope I've given you some real insights as to the variable number system by my favorite mathematician, maybe of all time, Mr. Peter Erickson. I'm going to make t shirts It's going to say square root of 1 times the square root of 1 equals minus 1. In a, invariably. <laughs> Whoo! High five to myself. Just made that up. Anyways, I hope this is interesting. My whole idea here is I want to keep in my mind. I want to give you things you're not going to see anywhere else. And certainly no one's going to be talking about this. I'm going to write a review for this on Amazon where you can see that, of course, in the comments below you'll see an, uh, a link where you can buy it pretty darn cheap and it's worth it. It will blow your mind. You have to read it four or five times. And it is fantastic. And remember, don't take my word for it. Read. Be critical. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I'm David D. Husser. I'm your science therapist. And yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a mathematician, but I have to tell you. I have to tell you. The world is not so wonderful. I used to say math was perfect. It ain't. The real number system ain't. The variable is way better. -er -er. So, ciao for now.